I'm Paul Curran and I would like to expand on the ways in which the building information is structured within a BIM project and how this affects our ability as QSs to provide robust cost information. During this section I'll touch on some of the various standards that, that are available to give guidance on efficient information exchange. We'll look at some examples to illustrate the key points and we'll expand on the input that a project QS can bring to the model development. In a traditional project, a QS might receive design information at various points, possibly following the RIBA plan of works for example. The QS might then issue a series of queries to clarify points of design for the purpose of producing a cost plan. On a BIM project, this process can be more formalised. There is already a significant body of information in existence to provide guidance on the exchange of information on BIM projects. There are a couple of examples shown here and for a moment I would like to take a closer look at a couple of points referred to in the documents on the left, PAS 1192 Part 2, the document that aims to standardise the processes and procedures employed by design teams during the capital phase of BIM projects. This standard requires that a project document known as the Employer's Information Requirements pre-specifies the data expectations for the various project stakeholders at different stages of the project. It goes on to clarify expectations from a commercial management perspective, even requiring software and file formats to be mandated in advance. So how can a QS feed into this document to ensure that sufficient data is supplied at the appropriate cost planning stages? At this point, I'm going to assume that the project QS intends to prepare his cost plans in accordance with the RICS new rules of measurement. Doing so will provide greater consistency in project cost planning. Now here is a more recent RICS research paper that I would like to draw attention to. This paper has been authored by members of the Salford University academic team alongside ISG. It contains some excellent guidance on the information requirements for cost planning and how this needs to be integrated into a BIM project. It also contains the following quotation. The capability of BIM platforms to perform automated quantification of items, areas and volumes of building elements does not produce a cost estimate. Application of BIM in cost estimating is a broader process than mere automated measurement. This quote highlights the continuing importance of the QS's role in the commercial management of BIM projects and helps to dispel the perception that automated quantity extraction in itself does away with the need for proper cost control in BIM projects. It aims to give a detailed schedule of data requirements that are required by the project QS to prepare cost plans at various project phases and this can be used by the QS to feed into the employer's re information requirement document we looked at earlier. So in this next section we'll take a few looks at some instances where the model information is not fully aligned with the cost planning needs of the project. This brief video demonstrates one common problem with infrastructure objects when exported in the BIM open format IFC. IFC is the format we want to work with, so we often like to share files with leading designers such as BWB to learn together on how we can improve exporting information for increased data usage. It is clear from the visual information available in what is a well-constructed model what the design intent is, and it would of course be possible to extract the relevant quantity information from this model. However, on reviewing the object properties in the schedule below, there are no quantity data exported, so a QS would have a hard time applying appropriate cost information based on this data. So as discussed, we are working with BWB to improve the IFC output for infrastructure designs. During the last BIM show live in Manchester, the panel on stage was wrestling with the question, having as much data as possible, good thing or bad? The point was not settled and there were good arguments on both sides of the debate. Bon Bryant Architects, who incidentally run an excellent BIM blog for those seeking further details, have done some extensive work on mapping IFC files and the following video demonstrates just how much data can go into the IFC depending on the export options selected. Here we have a fully detailed architectural model in which each of the elements has been carefully modelled containing relevant and accurate building information.
Here we can see a spreadsheet comparison of the data contained within that same Revit model after being exported to the IFC format using five of their export templates. Each line in the spreadsheet represents a different object property and we can see that the total amount of data available ranges between manageable and somewhat unwieldy. The quantity of data within a building model affects the basics such as file size and speed of access which may impair project members' ability to interact with the model effectively. More crucially, it creates further opportunities for the data present within the model to be out of line with the mandate set down in the employer's re information requirements. This brief clip highlights one of the most very basic information requirements that is still often missed. When models are exported to IFC, the option to export base quantities should always be ticked. This simple step turns an excellent 3D model into an excellent 3D model with great data. OK, now here we'll take a quick look at the types of inconsistencies within building models that we as QSs see working on BIM projects. Referring back to the RICS research paper mentioned earlier, one of the most fundamental requirements for a BIM to be modelled most usefully is for objects to be modelled using the appropriate modelling tool. This sounds basic, but is not always the case. This first clip indicates a fairly typical town centre unit with associated external car parking. On interrogation of the object properties for the purposes of pulling together the cost plan, it was noted that the car park has in fact been modelled as a timber floor. This may seem like a trivial example, but is easily done in building modelling software. As QSs, we tend to be the first party outside of the designer to look in detail at elements of the building model, and more often than not, a fresh pair of eyes helps to spot these kinds of inconsistencies. At this stage, we can rapidly feed back to the project's designers, helping to drive development of the model. We see the QS as a designer's best friend, working together to ensure everyone can use the data made available. In this clip, we have a model that has been developed to indicate alterations to an existing property. We'll gradually explode the model to isolate the existing wall components, and we can see from doing so that the structural columns have been incorporated into this building element. Whilst this has no implication for the design of the model itself, it will affect the development of the project's cost plan where any attempt to automatically take off the quantities will assign these items to the wrong section, possibly leading to incorrect cost information being allocated. Here we have an extract from the recent Build New York Live competition in which project teams had 48 hours to develop a concept design for a residential tower and sports facility. On day one a cost estimate is prepared using the available quantities seen here on the left. At the end of day two, the model has developed significantly, including alterations to the internal layout of the sports facility. On the left again, we can see that more quantity information is available for use in the cost plan. At this stage, the project QS can quickly produce a report detailing which of the model's objects have already been incorporated into the cost plan. Extracting this information to a separate audit tool ensures that cost plan allowances are gradually and methodically linked to the building information model driving accuracy. Using this type of tool we can again work with the design team to help drive development of the model to ensure that information is supplied at the right time. Okay, well thanks for listening to this section of the presentation.